Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it would certainly mean a lot. When picking the aircraft that will be considered essential to the future of your business's day-to-day -day operation, there's ultimately a lot of pressure to be felt. Additionally, being bombarded your way will be leading aircraft manufacturers, typically of Airbus and Boeing, looking to pitch their models of aircraft, deals and more to secure your lucrative contract. Sometimes an airline will opt for just one aircraft type, maybe from the one manufacturer, or they'll split the deal down the middle. However they get to this point is quite the journey, and the result will be, according to them, be deemed the best option for decades to come. Across recent years, the development of fleet at leading major US airlines has been fascinating to watch, with trends emerging from them. At Delta, we're seeing the visible shift towards Airbus-produced aircraft. This has been noticeable for some time, but is really coming into its own now. And while Boeing remains a pivotal part of the current fleet in the form of, say, 757s, 767s and 737s, that changes when looking into the future. Barring a 737-10 order, it is just primarily filled with next-generation Airbus planes. At United Airlines, heavy reliance has always been placed on Boeing jets, excluding a firm purchase agreement for the A321neos that are already operational and being delivered steadily. There are advantages, but also disadvantages to this kind of model. But for long-haul travel at least, why has United Airlines stuck with Boeing? Why not Airbus? Airbus's offerings, and what's the story behind it? In 2023, Boeing announced a historic wide-body order. It feels like the word historic is floated around quite a lot, and that's because to a certain extent, it's true. We've seen recent aircraft orders unlike any other in their sheer size, and this one was the largest wide-body contract from a US airline in commercial aviation history, with 100 orders for the 787 Dreamliner and a further 100 options. This was was widely considered the finale of what I like to describe as a bit of a long drawn out saga that included some consideration for the A350 from Airbus. However, this eventuating seemed unlikely given United's history of deferring the aircraft order that is actually in place for this wide body. So why the 787? Well, to begin with, let's analyze what the Dreamliner brings to United Airlines currently. The critical word here being currently. This is a series of aircraft that is already present in its day-to-day -day fleet. And at the time of creating this video at least, the Dreamliner fleet stands at 71 delivered units, spread across 68 active and 3 being listed as parked. However, one of the more important points is that all three variants in the series are present. Yes, that is the Dash 8, all the way up to the Dash 10. So firstly, each variant brings the airline fantastic levels of efficiency. This is a boring reason, but it is true. But there's much more than that, I like to think as well. The aircraft offers the airline fantastic levels of flexibility. United Airlines is, yes, putting all its eggs in the Dreamliner basket, and there are obvious risks associated with this. But the positives are generally seen to massively outweigh the risks risks as just what these three different variants can offer. These aircraft are a massive improvement as well over previous generation types, and they've allowed the airline to expand their network massively. And when I talk about flexibility, I specifically want to look into deployment. The 787s, all being yes from the same series, do have very different missions, but at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, they can be very easily switched out if something was to happen. You lose that flexibility if you move into other aircraft types. For United Airlines, a commitment to the 787 did actually also address their need to replace existing aircraft through, say, the next decade or so, with their 767s and Boeing 777s. These are some of the oldest wide-body units that are still operational, and they're being phased out in favour of the new aircraft that I do touch on. It's no secret that significant aircraft deals often come with discounts. While these are never publicly disclosed, they are in some instances instances, almost half of the value at list price that can be wiped off, and the amount is dependent on several factors. For United, the decision to stick with an aircraft that it is not only familiar with, but also loved by customers, has proved crucial for the airline, so it can really be deemed as a bit of a no-brainer. This commitment
moment, as I said, touches on the need to address replacement for aircraft, but it also underscores their dedication and focus on passenger comfort and satisfaction. Unfortunately, when it comes to these kind of videos explaining why, say, an aircraft is so perfect at an airline, they are usually the boring reasons, but they're the boring reasons that make all of this work. And at least for United, they believe the 787 is widely appreciated and can boost up those customer satisfaction levels, which in this day and age are so important. For its wide-body fleet, if United were to introduce the A350, which is a fantastic aircraft, it would really add a lot of unnecessary complications and complexities, if you will, too. This could easily stretch from the overall business to crew and maintenance. While discussions did surround around Airbus potentially being a part of the deal. Ultimately, United would head to Boeing once more to fulfill its wide-body need. It just generally needed to listen to all offers and potentially use other offers as a way to get a better deal with Boeing. Yes, believe it or not, that happens not just in the aviation industry, but in many walks of life. You may be watching this and may have engaged in some business transactions before or even job interviews and you've used other deals to get yourself a better position. At the same time as that historic 787 deal, it is also important to note that United pushed back deliveries once more for the A350 through to 2030. And if you'd like to learn a little bit about that A350 deal, there is an already published video on the channel that you're more than welcome to go and watch after this one. But obviously with a deferring of this to 2030, the likelihood of this deal ever actually going through seems highly unlikely. With contracts in place that they need to get out of and the deferring certainly helps them reach a point where they would be able to do this. We've seen persistent pushback from the airline over acquiring such a plane. It is important to also acknowledge the potential risks of operating just the 787 for its wide-body long-haul fleet long into the future. The past decade has probably shown us that relying solely on one aircraft type can be risky, as demonstrated by the MAX incident. Now we see persistent delivery delays with the 787 that are impacting shock horror United, with the airline publishing memos recently that have said it's overstaffed and will now need to slow down its growth forecast over the coming years to manage these delays. Despite challenges, the airline believes that all things considered, it would still see more more negative results at this point from introducing a new aircraft type, rather than say sticking with something it already operates, and to generally streamline. And with further entry into services for the units, it is a seamless process as well. Airlines, especially in the United States, have been on a pathway to streamlining. I'd argue in 2020 and 2021, streamlining was probably my most used word when it came to aircraft and airlines, as many companies were reviewing their fleet and were looking to achieve the goal of streamlining. This is also a general optimization with fewer aircraft types, meaning that there is more commonality and you don't have, say, planes that are surplus to requirements or multiple aircraft from multiple series when just one type could be doing that job. This has been identified as a problem in the past that needs rectifying. United's choice to stick with Boeing has backed their point over this matter. How successful it'll be remains to be seen, but for now, United is sticking true to its purchase and is happy with it. So it's over to you. Do you believe the 787 is the best aircraft for Boeing long into the future? Or do you see it as risky, putting all your eggs in one basket and believe they needed something else, whether even it was the 777X, to guide them forward? Thanks a lot for your support here on Globetrotting. I love making content on here and I hope you enjoy consuming it too. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you same place, same time in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis. And flight, and we'll fly.